The day starts out around 9 a.m. in the summer, at which time we go outside to check the rain gauge. We record our amount and report it to the National Weather Service, where it shows up on their list of rainfall reports in their local rainfall map. We'll continue the morning by checking emails, Facebook messages, comments, questions, and concerns. We may even just relax or we'll update the short-term forecast if anything desperately looks like it needs to be changed. And as always, there's always a little bit of snuggling with the cat. Hey. We'll eat lunch and then we'll go through the analysis process before we start to update the forecasts. We'll look at analysis charts from the surface to the upper level parts of the atmosphere to gain an idea of what the weather is currently doing. Normally we would hand draw these charts, but sometimes we get in a time crunch and have to go with the computer drawn maps. We'll also look at what we call soundings. These are data from weather balloon launches launched twice per day at Dodge City and Topeka. We'll also have a continual eye on the radar, as well as observations from the surface and up top from weather satellites showing us the clouds in their movement. After we've gone through the analysis, we'll take a look at various computer models to put together the forecasts. We'll start out by looking at several parameters in the upper atmosphere, then work our way down to the mid-levels and finally to the surface. We'll forecast precipitation, precipitation type, cloud cover, wind speed and direction, and of course, temperature. We'll then work on the extended range forecast. This is the forecast from three to five days out from the current time. We'll start that process by reading discussions from the Weather Prediction Center on what weather to expect across the nation for the extended range and on which models are handling certain systems the best. We'll then do what we did for the short term, work our way from the top down in the atmosphere. We'll also forecast precipitation, precipitation type, clouds, whether or not it will be breezy or windy, and temperature. After we've written out our forecasts, it's time to get them onto the computer. After that, we'll get them into graphics for our website, Facebook page, and for our forecast videos. We'll do this for each forecast zone and then our statewide planner. Then it's time to put together future Doppler. Next, it's time to dress up and power up to get ready to record the latest forecast videos. In three, two. And holding on the forecaster Peyton Sanders here in the Sears Weather Lab for your forecast. Here's a look at future Doppler by 7 p.m. tonight. We're going to continue to see some isolated showers and storms around this evening. Those will be diminishing after sundown. Overall, a warm evening here across Kansas. As we go through the night tonight, it's going to be mild. We're going to be looking at the better chances for rain and thunderstorms off to our southwest by 1 a.m. as that upper level low that's been plaguing us for the past few days continues to push off into the desert southwest. And as we go through early Wednesday, area of high pressure in place across Kansas, that's going to be keeping winds light for some. And as we go through the day, I think the better rain and storms are going to remain off to our southwest. However, I do think in the heat of the day, we could bubble up some isolated showers and storms. We're talking about a 15% chance at this point is what things are looking like. So just an isolated hit and miss type of deal for Wednesday, and that could continue as you go through 7 p.m. was just some isolated showers and storms around better activity off to our south and southwest. So if you want details on the forecast for your area of the state, be sure to click on the forecast tab right here on www.wx.net.
Cool. And then as we head into Wednesday, we'll be looking at highs into the lower 90s, a partly cloudy sky, and again, some hit and miss showers and storms in the afternoon. Once we have the south at 5 to 15. And here's the five day planner for Topeka and Northeast Kansas, getting the mid 90s by Thursday. Windy day for Thursday, then we'll be hotter by Friday, getting into the, or we'll still be in the mid 90s by Friday, then we'll be bringing back that chance for some isolated showers and storms into the weekend, should be in the lower 90s. Then we'll edit the forecast videos on the computer. The forecast for North Sydney, Wednesday will be five day point from Saturday. Storms and that continues as we head into Sunday. It should be around 93 for Sunday. Next, we'll put the forecast on the website. And finally, we'll put a post on our Facebook page giving a link to the updated forecast and a brief summary of what to expect with the weather over the next five days.